Hi there everyone, it's great to see you. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. And today we've got an exclusive look at the Q1 release schedule for Oxford Rail. And this includes all of the wagons that are due for release or have just been released. And I'd like to extend a great thanks to Oxford Rail for giving me the opportunity to take an exclusive look at all of these models. And certainly I know that these have proved very, very popular on pre-order. So here you are, guys. Here's a great first look at all these wagons. You saw it exclusively here first. And come with me in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts and with additional support from Billy's Replacement Speakers where you can find all of our merch branded for Billy's Replacement Speakers Gronk it up, my railway, my rules, and a whole lot more. We've got that in the shop down below, so treat yourself to some of our great branded merchandise. But I'm really excited to uh, be able to take a look with uh, the generosity of Oxford Rail at their whole Q1 release schedule. So come with me. Let's take a look. I'm so excited. <laughs> In the few years since Oxford Rail first started out, their name has become synonymous with pretty good quality wagons, but at an amazing price point. They're very much at the budget end of the market on price, but that doesn't mean that we're getting budget level models. And it's a really great combination that has made them some pretty well sought after wagons as they appear on the market. Now, Oxford Rail doesn't go for having huge numbers of projects on the go that they tell us about. And certainly they look to concentrate on delivering the projects that they've announced. And I'm really, really grateful to Oxford Rail for sending through all of their Q1 releases for this year. And uh, some of these are an exclusive first look at models which are not yet on the shelves in the model shops. And I'm really grateful to Oxford Rail for giving the channel the opportunity to look over all of these releases and for me to show you guys just what you can expect, not just from the models which are already released, but from those that are forthcoming at some point during Q1 2022. First up of these that I want to show you is the Great Eastern Railway ventilated van. And you can see all three versions that Oxford Rail are planning on putting out. We've got the original Great Eastern Railway livery. These were the standout announcements when Oxford Rail let it be known that these were their new project. And it's really nice to see that they've brought it out in the pre-grouping livery. Now we've had a lot of pre-grouping locomotives from a variety of different manufacturers, including Oxford Rail themselves with the N7 in its original Great Eastern Railway uh, kind of austerity grey. And this is a very welcome addition to the range to be able to run not just with that locomotive, but a whole range of other locomotives from a variety of different manufacturers. Because whilst we're getting the locomotives in their pretty ornate livery, we've been starved of the rolling stock to go with them. Because of the way that wagons could tend to roam around the British railway system, it does mean that it's quite feasible that this Great Eastern Railway liveried van could work to pretty much anywhere within the British Isles. The wagon is also announced in this North Eastern Railway grey livery as the Great Eastern Railway was absorbed into what became the London and North Eastern Railway in 1923. So over a period of time, the rolling stock was repainted into the new corporate identity. And Oxford Rail are not neglecting this with the version that you see here in a somewhat darker grey from the almost white cream colour of that Great Eastern Railway livery. It has to be said though that not everything was painted overnight and it was probably possible to see these wagons in, in an increasingly dirty and dilapidated state in the Great Eastern Railway colours probably for anywhere up to a decade after 1923, although they would have got fewer and further between as the wagons 
went into the shops for repairs, they would have received a new coat of paint into the LNER corporate colours. The third wagon from this trilogy is the final guise of this wagon as it passed post-1948 into British Railways livery. Now you can see that it's still in grey, but it's a lighter grey, and that is in keeping with the freight grey that British Rail used, and it is correctly numbered up as an Eastern Region van. And these are a very different design to any of the other vans that we've had released from any of the other manufacturers. And so this will make a welcome addition to provide that much needed variety in goods yards and goods trains. And again, these vans could have been seen worked up and down the system. So it's a great excuse for modelers of any region to buy one of these just to mix and match in what they have in their layout. And I think this will look great just breaking up the monotony of 10 foot wheelbase vans in a freight train. So let's get into these and see just how these wagons fare up. The Great Eastern Railway version is code OR76GEGV001 and this is as number 23109. It's the standard Oxford Rail packaging and these are a standard form factor. All of the manufacturers use this size which does make them quite good for storage. Um, and we also have in a little bag here, they come with three link chain couplings and these are proper metal and I'd wager that these are perfectly functional for those people who want to go down the three link coupling route. So that is a really nice touch. Just removing the wagon from its clamshell and then we can really see just what Oxford Rail have delivered to the market. The detail on this wagon is really, really sharp. I do like these end vents. If we turn the wagon upside down, you can see that they're solid on the inside, but really you're never going to see. So actually, it's um, a pretty good way of doing it, keeping the model nice and robust. But from every other angle, they do look really good. The planking is well defined and certainly a very light dirty black wash over this will really highlight the planking detail and make this wagon look like one that is looked after but has certainly seen a little bit of running on the railways. Underframe detail is pretty crisp and you can see there the tear weight 7.2.2 and then we've got uh, the running number on the sole bar as well as on the van body itself. This kind of dirty washed out cream, it does remind me a little bit of the later BR ventilated vans that appeared in that white livery. Although this has a slight grey tinge to it and you can see here on its own in this light, it certainly does come out more of a grey than a cream. I really like the banding on the wagon, you can see there the cross struts that go into making the strength on the prototype and certainly we've got some Nice fine detail on the door strapping and the uh, body detail too. The underframe is uh, got all that planking detail. We've got the actual ribs which show the construction of these wagons. And what's interesting is there does appear to be a hole there for what I would guess might be a vacuum cylinder version. And that is possibly something to be on the lookout for forthcoming from Oxford Rail because uh, as far as I can tell I don't think any of these three releases feature any vacuum brakes. The couplings are these slimline tension locks in a uh, slightly springy mounting and the actual little triangular tail fits discreetly between the wheels there on the axle and we feature free running metal split spoke wheels and actually they are some of the freer running wagon wheels that I've seen in quite some time. The roof is integral to the body and certainly it's all finished in what actually looks to me a really, really good representation of this great Eastern Railway, very, very light grey livery. Moving on to the next wagon in this trio, we've got it in the North Eastern Railway livery. Looking to the box code, this is OR76GEGV002 and uh, it's a different running number so again mix and match 
the earlier livery would still be good mixed in with the later livery there would be a crossover period which does give you some degree of variety again we get those three link couplings really nice touch and getting the wagon from the packaging what you can see here is compared to the lighter liveried version it is much more of a grey in fact all of a sudden that very light grey wagon suddenly looks quite white by comparison although you can see from the E and the roof um, that this is definitely more of a creamy grey this livery really does show up that detail, I particularly like that door detail, so nicely done. And then we've now got the northeastern wagon plates on the sole bar. And you can see all that detail, the rivet detail, everything that's going on there. Certainly the brake detail does look good, still got the same tear weight. And there, really crisp application of the lettering. There's no bleed through of the livery and certainly even where it goes over the planking, we don't get any smearing of that livery at all. We also get the full load weight of uh, 10 tonnes that this wagon could carry and the end detail does show off really well. Another point to note, metal turned uh, buffers and they are good and firm. I know it was something on the very early Oxford Trail wagons that there was a degree of criticism that the buffers could come out really easily. And it is great to see that Oxford Rail took this on board very, very quickly and sorted that out. The rest of the underframe is as before, and we've still got those split spoke wheels, the slimline tension lock couplings, all of that brake detail, really, really nice. In fact, let's just work out if that lever is pulled down, then yes, it would apply the brake. So the brake rigging on these is the correct way round. I'm just looking there to the roof. The white, it's not a, a clean, clean white. It's actually perfectly represented for a typical London and Northeastern Railway wagon. And this is a great addition to the six plank wagons and the four plank wagons that Oxford Rail already have in their range. And certainly this is a welcome addition, not just for LNER modelers, but anybody who models any of the big four, as these wagons would have again roamed the system to some degree depending on traffic needs. The final wagon from this trilogy is the BR Grey livery and this is code OR76 GEGV003 and uh, again this is another different running number and I'm guessing that certainly in the early BR period it'd be quite possible for a weathered up version of this livery to be mixed in to some degree with some cleaner wagons in this livery uh, because there really was uh, something of a crossover period and certainly freight rolling stock wouldn't be repainted anywhere near as frequently as passenger rolling stock or express locomotives. Still got those three link couplings and actually with this livery the roof is a much darker grey. Let's just compare that. Uh, so we've got the white on the LNER one and uh, that's probably more in keeping with the Great Eastern Railway grey and the livery actually it's satin enough that uh, it doesn't look really really flat and matte which would look odd in wagon form but we don't have that sharp gloss which again would look really peculiar. It's got the same wheels, those split spoke wheels, and uh, again now it's got the BR plate on the chassis and the black square where we've got its uh, number prefixed with the E, 10 tonnes is on there, and then we've got a tear weight, this one's slightly different, 6 tonnes, 1300 weight, and you can see underneath there, wheelbase 10 foot 6, so these are a slightly longer wheelbase van than uh, the 10 foot ones and the 9 foot ones that we've been used to and again that just adds to that variety in your uh, goods yards and in your trains which really is something that uh, modelers have sorely craved. It's great to see these pre-grouping origin fans finally making it into a range out there and it's certainly uh, a van which I think will be a stalwart of the Oxford Rail range for a long time to come.
In terms of running characteristics, these ran really, really smoothly on Weir Yard, taking in all of the point work with no problems whatsoever. So all in all, really pleased with these. And certainly price-wise, we're looking at under £15 a wagon, which when you consider that older tooled wagons from other manufacturers are going for £20 to £30 for a comparable sized wagon, that is really great value. The next pair of wagons that Oxford Rail have sent over are the banana wagons. Now, outwardly, they are quite similar to those great Eastern Railway vans, but certainly banana traffic was quite a big industry for the railways and uh, they tended to have these special wagons that were designed to help ripen the fruit en route and they used the steam heating for doing this and uh, it's a peculiar quirk of bananas that they're picked unripe and then they're kind of ripened en route to make sure that when they reach the shops they are in perfect condition and the railways were a part of that and uh, at the first half of the last century it was big business. Oxford Rail have tooled up these two different versions so we've got the LNER diagram van and then we've got it in its later BR guise. First one I'm going to look at is the London and North Eastern one so we've got a code here OR76BAN001 and uh, this is the LNER livery. Now it has a bulk sighty livery which does make it stand out amongst the vans. And these would have had steam heating pipes uh, to in order to help ripen the load en route. Now we've got a different kind of coupling to these, whereas we had the basic three links on the Great Eastern Railway vans. These include the Instanta type couplings, and these are really nicely done. Again, metal and perfectly functional. Pulling the wagon from the clamshell, it really is a lovely model. We've got that same detail and strapping that we saw on the Great Eastern Railway van, but we've got much different ends. In fact, I'm going to bring back in one of those Great Eastern Railway vans, and you can see there very different ends to these. And we've got here as well, uh, factory fitted, the vacuum brakes, and of course these would run at express speeds, uh, very much, I guess, the origin of the just-in-time delivery. Such was the urgency to have these at the perfect rightness when they were going to the shops. The underframe on these, it actually does clear up a little bit of the mystery I was wondering with the Great Eastern Railway vans. These do utilise a similar underframe, but you can see there that we've got the additional clasp brakes and the vacuum cylinder and that does clear up the mystery of those extra holes but of course you won't see those from uh, any normal viewing angle. The wheels are still those split spoke wheels and uh, again really free running but this brake detail we have some really nice factory fitted brake detail with the clasp brakes and this is some of the nicer brake detail that I've seen on a ready to run wagon. The rest of the livery application is pretty good. The bauxite on this has got a very red color and uh, I'm guessing that these vans were painted quite distinctly. They didn't want them ending up getting used for other traffic. It was very important to the railways to have these on dedicated flows. It's uh, got banana written on the side. Again, really, really sharp printing. And whereas uh, very early on, I think a lot of uh, red base liveried wagons struggled with the tampo printing over the top with the white lettering. There's no such problem with these. We've got no bleed through whatsoever of the livery. Got a really nice works plate underneath there, the LNER works plate. And all of the detail and the uh, printing is really, really crisp. Again, I think these wagons would be improved with a slight dirty wash and there's certainly a lot of uh, weathering that can go on to really bring out some of this detail. Similar roof to the Great Eastern Railway vans, uh, finished in this quite clean white, though I suspect that the white didn't remain very clean for very long in traffic. 
Moving on to the next of these, we've got code OR76BAN002, and this is the van in its BR guise. So, passing through into the ownership of British Railways, banana traffic still quite important, and uh, these wagons would have still been plying their trade. Still got those uh, uh, instant type couplings. These are actually really nice, they're metal and fully functional. What I should probably point out is that we've got that metal draw hook there on the buffer beam, which does go with those instanter couplings. And uh, it is fully metal, it is really quite strong. Again, we've got pretty solid buffers and all that detail is there. In its later BR livery, I am a little bit uncertain though, would these vans have got new works plates when they were rebuilt? Not entirely sure on that, but certainly, um, it's no big deal and what you do get is a really crisp representation of that works plate. The rest of the underframe detail really is nice and I actually do like that extra complication of the vacuum brake. I'm going to bring back that great Eastern Railway van. We've got same colour applied to both roofs and it's a slight silver grey but it does work quite well for me. In terms of the livery between BR and L and ER. Doesn't appear to be any difference in colour there, uh, although the different colour roofs do make it appear slightly different, uh, but as best I can tell, both of these vans are in exactly the same colour. This is a really welcome addition to the ready to run stable and again gives you that much needed variety in your goods yards and in your trains and these would have run at express speeds probably in dedicated block working trains although it may be conceivable that they could have also run as tail traffic on an express uh, passenger train as well and with the steam heating it wouldn't actually matter whether these were marshalled in front of the coaches or behind because they would pass through the steam heat for the coaches as well. Again in terms of price I'm seeing these at exactly the same price as we saw the ventilated vans at uh, just a shade under £15 but they are proving incredibly popular and certainly a lot of the sites I'm looking at are starting to show sold out to pre-orders so really you do need to get your skates on and one of the things that we always recommend is do go and take a look at uh, some of the smaller shops that are out there and uh, I always recommend Durham Trains of Stanley also Arcadia Models in Shaw Loco Shed in Whitefield, 53A models in Hull, and also do check out TMC as well uh, because they are still out there to get. And at this price, with all the complaints that we've had from people about the rising price of models, this is a remarkable price. For the next models, actually struggling to fit these on the screen, these are the Pilchard wagons. And actually a really unusual announcement from Oxford Rail, not least because they're a wagon that I think a lot of people haven't quite realised were out there. Certainly not a huge number made, but that is something that Oxford Rail does well with the Bosch Buster gun. They certainly proved that quirky and unusual does sell exceptionally well. So I'm really, really pleased to have both versions of this wagon here. Now I'm going to start off with this one, I'll push the other one out to one side, and um, very difficult to actually get it on screen. We've got code OR76PIL001, and this is the Pilchard wagon in the BR black. So this is the earlier livery. They were an unusual uh, engineer's wagon. Just going to get this out of the box. Again, these come with the three link type couplings. Um, I thought these, again, slightly different to the ones that we saw with the vans, which I've got here. And again, different from what came with the banana vans. So it's these little details that really show the attention that Oxford Rail has put into these. First up, this is actually quite a weighty wagon. There's a good deal of ballast weight hidden away in here and it really does feel um, like something that will hold the track incredibly well. 
the livery itself, I've seen a lot of debate online as to the livery and what colour it should be. And the general consensus is, and this is based on having looked through pretty much all the photographs that are available out there, is that these wagons weren't really ever properly painted and that the livery that you see is generally just heavily dirtied and weathered wood and with possibly the metal strapping having received some regular coats of paint just to stop it from rusting. In clean form this makes the wagon look slightly odd but again this is a wagon which I think will make a great weathering project and with the wealth of weathering powders and washes on the market I can see a lot of great projects to weather down this wagon and make it resemble the really dark filthy wagons that can be found on some of the websites out there uh, photographed over the years. The wagon does feature a wealth of detail, these very characteristic wagon ends are modelled here. A little bit difficult to show up on the camera, they are quite dark and we've got these oval buffers, again nice and firm, I think they're metal and then we've got the slimline tension lock couplings there. These wagons were never uh, braked other than with a handbrake and certainly a quirky little wagon and the fact that none of them had train brakes did mean that they were uh, withdrawn probably quite early as early casualties of uh, the engineering fleet. The interior features a riveted metal floor, although this is moulded in plastic, the rivet detail is actually subtle but very effective. The inside of the wagon does look a slightly cream colour. My only criticism of this might be that the interior wood, if these were unpainted, should be roughly the same colour as the exterior wood. But actually, it doesn't look too bad in this livery. The printing is, again, really, really sharp, and you can see that rivet detail relief down the side. And these drop side doors with the springs on the uh, chassis and uh, the hinges on the wood do look very, very effective. Looking at the works plate there, everything is perfectly legible and it really is a nice presentation. We've got some quite simple detail underneath and that is indicative of the prototype wagons. There wasn't a lot going on, seeing as they didn't have through piping or brakes. The bogies too, those are really, really nice. We've got a lot of air gaps through there. Not entirely sure if these are metal or not, but certainly the relief detail is incredibly crisp. And I'm guessing that that may be giving this wagon a lot of low down weight, which does mean that it holds the track really, really well. These wheels, free running disc wheels. And then we've got the couplings. They're not bogey mounted, they're mounted to the wagon itself in some quite subtle mounts there, which if you want to remove these couplings, it's easy to do without leaving anything to uh, be glaring. And uh, it's the standard slimline tension lock. We've got separately applied handbrake wheels. There's uh, four of these on the wagon, one to each corner. And the rest of the detail really does look nice. Looking to the second one of these wagons that have been sent over, we have got here Code OR76PIL002, and this is the Pilchard Wagon BR Black. Now, uh, that's a little bit misleading in a way. Again, I guess the, the black is for the metal work, but this is the later TOPS version of the wagon with its three letter TOPS code. Again, we've got those same couplings. Really nice. I do like the, so much detail in them. This is really above and beyond detail. Removing the wagon from the packaging, we can see that outwardly there's not a huge difference between that previous version, but it, the wagon has gained that TOPS code of YCO. It is a different running number, and certainly from the photographs that I've seen, it would appear that these wagons got their TOPS code fairly late in their lives, and it's perfectly acceptable to run both of these wagons together in a 1970s type period, as some wagons got their tops code and others were still awaiting. We do have the different running number on there, but other than that, uh, all the other detail does appear to be exactly the same, but it does mean that you've got some great options for building up a fleet of engineers wagons. 
And certainly it is one of the more interesting engineers wagons that is out there that was built specifically for that purpose. In terms of price, I'm finding these out there for just under £16 a wagon. Again, a really great price for a fairly large sized bogey wagon. So there you have it, all of the different planned releases for Q1 from Oxford Rail. And I'm really grateful to Oxford Rail for sending these over so that I'm able to do this exclusive look at all of the different versions. And it's really great to see not just the ones that are just reaching the shop at the time of filming, but also those that are forthcoming at some point between this month and next month at the time of filming. In terms of price point, Again, Oxford Rail have delivered some great models at an amazing value for money price point. And even with the price increases that have come through due to that huge increase in shipping and also the cost of manufacture, Oxford Rail have kept that to an absolute minimum. And I've actually seen that the prices on these have risen by no more than around a pound over what they were previously announced at. So that is actually really, really good. All in all, I think that these are a great addition to any fleet. The Great Eastern van, particularly for me, is a welcome addition for all of those pre-grouping locomotives that have been coming through and gives them something more to pull. The Northeastern and BR versions of these wagons also give a great deal of variety throughout the life of these wagons and a little bit of something for almost every modeler. The Pilchard wagons, they suit the BR period right through to the BR Blue period, and certainly these will be a great addition for later modelers. And what I can recommend is that uh, take these on board as a heavy weathering project, and you really can't weather these too heavily. It's also a bit of a debate online about whether any of these actually received BR Departmental Olive Green. But having discussed this with Oxford Rail whilst these were in development, we came to the conclusion that what people were seeing was not actually olive green, but just encrusted filth. And seriously, go and take a look at these pilchard wagons in photographs of the prototypes, and you will find exactly what I mean. These really would benefit from a massive amount of weathering. They're a great bunch of wagons, and I look forward to seeing more from Oxford Rail. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, do please leave a comment down below. It'd be great to hear from you. What do you think about these wagons? And uh, are these items that you've got on pre-order? Are these items that you've already received? What do you think of them? And is there something glaringly obvious that you think that I've missed in the review? Again, it's a really great way of helping out other modelers by getting all that information out there. So do take a look at the comments as well and see if somebody maybe has answered a question that you have but uh, it's been a real joy to go through these and a big big thank you to Oxford Rail for very generously sending over a sample of one of all of their Q1 releases to allow this exclusive video. Uh, don't forget that you can also check us out over on Patreon. This is a great way to support the channel and just help us to be able to keep making the videos that you want to see. I'd also be interested to hear from you in the comments section about what videos you want to see coming up in the future. And we are going to try and get uh, a whole load of interviews with manufacturers, that sort of thing. So there is a lot coming from this channel. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself and until next time. Time. Happy modeling, bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train o matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson. Offshaw Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, 
and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.